I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on the Spotlight Network, we're diving into a powerful book. It is called Unflinching, True Lies and Fierce Dreams by Swanee Hain. It is a bold memoir that reveals the challenges, resilience, and humor of a remarkable life. The author shares her journey from navigating life in Los Angeles to coming out in 1979, offering a raw and intimate story of courage and self-discovery. This book will make you laugh, cry, and cheer as you walk along Swanee on her unforgettable path. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing her amazing book. The links are below this interview. Swanee, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Thank you so much. Really great book, wonderful memoir, has a lot of social impact and importance as well. Coming out in 1979 was a brave thing to do. Um, it because, felt like it too. Yeah, I'm sure it was. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your coming out story, if you, you could share that with us. Um, it's something that I just kept hidden from myself for a very long time. And, and it, it just was time for me to let it all out and to come out, to be out in the world that, that was new to me. It was a tough time because it was the the height of the AIDS crisis as well. Yes. So there was a lot of prejudice and black uh, backlash against gay and lesbians, uh, no doubt. Um, it was, was scary. The, it was scary, I'm sure. Yeah, it was scary. Yeah, was it hardest telling your family or? Did I didn't. Know? I don't have any family. I haven't had family in years, so there really oh. was no one to disclose that to. But to my dear and near. Friends, oh, wow. yes, it was it was very hard because I feared losing them. Gotcha, gotcha. Just give us an overview of the book. Tell the folks what they'll find when they crack the covers. True lies and fierce dreams. That's what I call it. Um, it's 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 what happened to me from my, the time I was a kid, a baby, mm -hmm. and that that formed me. I mean, the fact that I didn't have a father and never uh, he never um, recognized me. So it was pretty awful. Um, mm. And some stepfathers and some drinking and some stuff like that. So it was a little bit hard. Yeah. It was easier later. Right, right. Well, it sounds like a tough upbringing, not having a father around, some stepfathers who were problematic. And I'd imagine your mom was problematic too if she had stepfathers. She was an alcoholic drinking. too, yeah. 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 Which is tough. What was it like growing up in L.A.? Did that shape your experience and your worldview? Oh, yes. I loved it. It was fabulous. I still love L.A. And, and I, I was there for most of my adult life. Oh. I, I I have very fond memories about L.A. Uh, it's a great city. Did it make it easier? Uh, did you find the people in Los Angeles were more accepting of different yes. lifestyles? Yeah. Yes. There were opportunities for me to, to meet people. Yeah. Like Wonderful. myself. Yeah. yeah, yeah, wonderful. Why did you name the book Unflinching? Because that's how I live. Yeah, you're not afraid? I'm not afraid. You, know you don't flinch? Yeah. That's good. You just you just plow, plow on, you know? Yeah. I think people grow up with tough upbringings, grow up one of two ways. Either they're unflinching like you, or they're afraid of everything. No. So I think, yeah, you're not you. I know, not you. You're not afraid of anything, which is great. Well, I'm mean, afraid of a lot of things, but I don't talk about them. <laughs> okay. What do you mean by true lies? They're true lies. They're, they're absolutely lies that were told to me um, that things were normal, mm. which they were not. Yeah. And, and um, it was just a lot of lies, yeah. a lot of um, alcohol abuse, drug right. abuse. Um, so the family was pretty shattered. Right. Yep. In fierce dreams? Why not? Yeah. If you're going to dream, dream fiercely, um, right? Just do it. Yeah. Just, yeah. just, just jump in and do it. And that's basically what happened when I decided to write the book. I just thought I need to, I need to tell this story. Yeah. I need to get her off my <laughs> off of me onto somebody else. Right, right. Tell us how humor helped you navigate difficult times. Oh my God, I wouldn't have any life if I didn't have humor. Yeah, it's what keeps it. It what keep you if you re realize what the absurd is. It's okay. Yep. And if it's humorous, and a lot of absurd behavior is humorous, yeah. it's it's just easier to swallow. Yep. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And the ability to laugh at yourself, I think, is probably absolutely important. Oh, God, I do that a lot. Yeah. Well, if you're me, you can't help but laugh at yourself. You're going to laugh well, at yourself. Well, why. yeah. <laughs> I know you love Irish culture. You've got your green on today. Uh, tell us. I've got my poster right behind me, too. Yeah, there you go. That's right. Notre Dame. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your love for Notre Dame football and Irish I, Catholic nuns when I was in first grade. My condolences. And they all, I all spoke too. with a brogue and they were all about our boys. We had to pray for our boys on Saturday. So I continued to do that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, we have a shared experience there because I was educated by nuns and later brothers and later priests. And uh, I've <laughs> and got you're the not scar. scarred I... too much, are you? What's that? You're not too scarred, are you? Uh, I've got my scars. They don't show too much, which yeah, is. Yeah, well, that's what you do, see? Uh, exactly, exactly. Yeah, all the way through college. I had Jesuits in college. But, oh, dear uh, God. Yeah, some were great and some were brilliant. I mean, we paint them with a broad stroke and some are awful, no doubt. They were so mean. Particularly well, there, there were a lot of nuns that were just terrors. Yeah, the nuns were so mean. God, they scared um, the hell out of you, don't yeah, they? Uh, well, they grab you by the ear, they grab you by the hair. Oh, no, it's the, it's the ruler on the back of the hand. Yeah, yeah. It was tough. The nuns were tough. Uh, the brothers were tough, too. The priests were better. Um, but, uh, you know, but Hey, we got through it, you know, we got through it. Exactly. Whatever doesn't kill me makes me stronger. Right. That's right. And that's a little bit of the theme of your book too, right. In a way that right. you can get through this. Oh, you do. You have yeah. to, you, you have no choice really to, other than to just roll over and yeah. give up. Exactly. 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 What do you feel is one of the most defining moments in your life that you describe in the book? Coming up. Yeah. Growing up. Coming yeah. out. Oh, coming out. Coming out. Coming yeah. out. Growing yeah. up was tough. Yeah. Yeah. There and were some evil characters around, you know? Yeah. In the family. Yeah. A lot of alcohol. A lot of alcohol. Right. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that that can be the bane of many people's existence, alcohol. It, it really but was. It really was. It's terrible. It's a sin. I, I don't drink at all anymore. I, I stopped either. five years ago. I don't have a drop. Yeah, <laughs> without a doubt. You see, it's a, it's a good thing to do. Um, talk to us a little bit about your favorite people from your journey and how they impacted you. Um, my favorite person from my journey is Jane Paul Rappaport. She's passed now. Mm -hmm. But uh, she was right there with me coming out. And not her, but me. She was... Amazing. She was absolutely the most influential, influential person I've had in my life. She's now passed. I'm sorry about that. And um, so she was there to support you. And Absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's so important. That's so important. You know, here we are, whatever it is, 44 years later, 45 years later after 1979. Do you think Things are things are obviously better today. For obviously our, better and uh, much yeah. better. Yeah. All yeah. around. And even in right. Sacramento, which was not exactly in the forefront. Right. Right. It was more of a conservative culture up there. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Without a bad doubt. I did, I did OK. I, you know, I really did, can't say that I've had any real problems. I've been right. very candid about where where I stand. Yeah. Well, what do you hope people take away from your book? Um. You can do it. Yeah. You can do it. Yeah. Absolutely. You can come out on the other side. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Endurance, perseverance, determination, and true humor. grit, no doubt. Humor. Yeah. And humor. Yeah. Humor. Lest we forget humor. Yep. I understand uh, you're quite a fan of cats also. Tell us about that. Um, I never had a cat growing up. Hmm. But I ended up with four, and I'm down to one now. Okay. Since I'm so old, I can't do with four. Yeah, it's tough. We They're have, great. Uh, They're wonderful. Um, they were. I wrote a whole a chapter about cats, hmm. and and their personalities, and and I, I they my buddies. They're my little buddies. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I don't I had cats growing up. I don't have one now. I have dogs. I never had cats growing up. I didn't yeah. get them till I was like 40. Yeah. Wow. Wow. 
I used, there was a little pet shop in my neighborhood that sold them for like five dollars. Oh and my gosh! I, I used to bring home cats. Yeah, I used to buy them, <laughs> save all my money, get five dollars, and bring home cats. My father, his head would explode. Oh my gosh! Yeah, and, I'll bet. But uh, you know what can you do? That's what kids do. What advice would you give to others who are struggling to embrace their true selves? Just do it. Yeah. There, it's it's not going to kill you. It's yeah. not going to kill you. It's going to free you to um, discover all the parts of you. Yeah. This this wouldn't have happened. This book wouldn't have happened if I hadn't lived this life. Right. And then documented it basically. Absolutely. It's it's, uh, it's empowering. It is. It is. You've got to be yourself. You've got to let other people see you as you see yourself. You have to be your authentic self. I think it's very, very true. Talk to us a little bit about your background in English and your love for literature and how it influenced your writing in this book. Well, it's what I graduated with a degree in, in mm. from college. Um, and, and it's always opened doors for me. Yeah. I I still to this day am an avid reader. Don't read, don't even let me in a bookstore because I'll just buy the place out. It um that opens the world. I mean, my God. Yeah. No, I agree. Books are definitely a portal to a, a better place and understanding of our it own. Saved you. It saved you. It was my life. safe. It was my safeguard. Yeah. And when home life got crappy, which yeah. was frequently, um, yeah. books were where I hid. Yeah. Well, they're a good place to hide. If you got to hide somewhere, that's a good place to hide because mm -hmm. you're growing your brain at the same time. Now, I understand you like vintage movies and oldies music Absolutely. as well. Oh, my God. I love them. What's your favorite vintage film? Oh, God. Don't even say that. Um, I'm thinking Random Harvest just comes to mind. Okay. Well, believe it or not, I've never seen that. Well, who's, that's a good one. Who's, uh, who's Greer Garson. Greer Garson. Greer Garson. Okay. Yes. I'll check it out. She's I'll a queen. She's great. Yeah, I I'm love old bit... movies from the 40s, and I was able to go to MGM Studios before they got right. compromised yeah. and um, just drive, drive through, go through the costume shop, go every place where they ate, where they walked, where they sat, all the sets, and it was one of, one of the best days of my life. It was just fabulous. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I'm a big fan of old movies, too. Black and white, film noir. You know. Love Cary Grant. Cary Grant was- Oh, old. I love him. Yeah. I exactly. just watched him yesterday. Do you remember in what? I don't even remember what I was watching, but it was a yeah. good one. Yeah, I love Charade. Holiday. Holiday Charade. Was one of his obscure uh, was Charade, you saw him in? Yeah, I, I watched that last night. Yeah, wonderful. Audrey wonderful. Hepburn. Let's talk a little bit about the quote, heart on my sleeve, fire in my soul, mouth I cannot control. Tell us a little bit about that. That's, that's me. Yeah. I just told you right there. You told yourself. That's me. Yeah. Yep. That's I believe wonderful. that. I just believe that. And I guess I've lived it. Absolutely. Is this your first book you've written? It is. Any more coming now that you've written this I, one? I don't see one on the horizon. I'll be honest with you. Right. I don't, but, I don't know. I don't even think I want to go over again getting older. Yeah. Well, uh, it beats the alternative when you're getting older, right? Tell me about it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We're all getting older. I, I'm, I, it's it was an experience that I uh, am very grateful I had. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're very grateful you wrote this book. I think it's going to be a great service to a lot of people who are struggling so. with you know challenges from their upbringing, challenges in life. Be, uh, being true to their own identity. The name of the book is Unflinching, True Lies and Fierce Dreams. It is a bold memoir that reveals the challenges, resilience, and humor of a remarkable life. Swanee, thank you so much for joining me. Thank here you so podcast. much. I appreciate it, Logan. And your staff is first rate, by the way. Well, I appreciate that. They are the best. And thank you so much. And they help me find the best authors like you, which is great as well. Thank you so it's much. My pleasure. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight. <laughs>